Australia, the land of my birth, a beautiful red continent, home to wondrous animals, and famous for its estuary and crocodiles, Vegemite, and Fatima Payman. Sure, I guess. I mean, those aren't bad things to be famous for. I mean, we are the origin point of the macadamia, and we did invent aspirin, the internet, and bionic eyes, but now nah, we're good. Let's have the giant crocs and salty spread and the skibbity senator. But regardless of politicians attempting to pander to Generation Alpha and prehistoric archosaurs, Australia is hiding a dark secret. Secret, and that is... Pause for a drum roll. Drum roll, please. Give me a drum roll. Our ecology is absolutely cooked. And if we don't do something soon, we won't have many ecosystems left. Now, Australia has two problems with animals, both of which occasionally overlap, and these are invasive species and an overpopulation of herbivores. Now, to address the first issue, the reason why invasive species are such a problem is simple. Local ecosystems have no experience with these animals, meaning that they rapidly overwhelm their new environment. What doesn't help is that these animals tend to be European animals, which function very differently from native Australian ones. Uh, European animals are evolved for a much more resource-rich environment, meaning that they overconsume local food supplies, ravaging the local ecosystem. Take the bloody no rodents known as the rabbits. They reproduce like, like, well, crazy, they reproduce like rabbits, and they consume way too much plant matter, so local animals like the bilby can't keep up, or the feral cat issue. Where these guys are growing up to 10 kilograms and 1.2 meters of pure muscle, meaning that they are ravaging pretty much every animal across all levels of the trophic system. Or the cane toad, which has got a noticeably larger, stronger, and more venomous since arriving in Australia. And while the government has been attempting to manage these animals, well, there are simply too many animals to reliably kill. I mean, if, with the population numbers of invasive species, culling isn't so much a reliable method as a liability, and it's going to be a waste of resources. And while dingoes have been known to serve as ecological guardians against feral cats, there aren't enough of them to make an impact, nor is their range great enough. So the government is effectively ineffectual against these pests, which are only here, mind you, because some rich wanker in the 1800s wanted to feel like he was back in... Yeah. Britain. My man, if you wanted to feel like you were in Britain, then you should have stayed there. And well, the second problem is pretty linked to the first. Ever since the Pleistocene extinction linked to the to climate change and the fire-based hunting tactics of the Aboriginal peoples of this nation, Australia has been lacking not only many large herbivores, but large carnivores as well. This means that invasive species such as hogs, buffalo, deer, horses, and camels have been able to thrive without competition, while more mid-sized local species such as red and grey kangaroos have exploded in population and now outnumber humans. And because Australia accelerates evolution thanks to our nat nature as both an island and a continent with a harsh environment, these animals are getting tougher and more durable, requiring less food and water, all while expanding their population. Now, while the dingo has served as something of a countermeasure, they're not as large as grey wolves, and as a result are less likely to target larger prey, especially when they have access to small lizards or marsupials. Additionally, the range of the dingo in their preferred environment means that they can't serve as an effective countermeasure to large-bodied invasive species. This is a major problem. Now, well, where does this lead us? Well, you saw the title of the video, and by now you know the problems facing our country. Australia wasn't always without large-bodied predators. In fact, prior to the Great Aridification, there were several. Uh, approximately 4 million years ago, two large monitor lizards evolved in Australia, Varanus komodoensis and Varanus priscus. Komodoensis still exists today, though it's not in Australia. It's more commonly known as the Komodo dragon, but priscus, more commonly known as the Megalania, is the one that I wish to focus on. This thing was one of the largest land predators of the Pleistocene, measuring anywhere from 4 to 8 meters long. Weight estimates are a little difficult to acquire given how fragmentary the fossils that we have are, but from what I've heard, I believe it was in the half ton range of 400 to 650 kilograms. Overall, given its size range and what it likely would have hunted being the diprotodon, which was the pushover, 
I believe that the larger Megalania would be the perfect animal to deal with feral populations of buffalo, camels and horses, while the smaller individuals could take down kangaroos and feral cats. So oh, you may be saying, dear viewer, something along the lines of this. Oh, okay, well it's all well and good to uh, suggest reintroducing the Megalania, but ow, it's extinct! And to that I would say, correct, the Megalania vanished alone. 40,000 years ago, likely due to the extinction of its prey animal that I proded on, along with climate change and modifications to the ecosystems that it lived in. But all is not lost for this animal. After all, its closest living relative, the Komodo dragon, is still alive and present in Indonesia. While the environment that they would be reintroduced to would be fairly different from the one in which they lived, we could tweak their genetics so that they could be able to survive a more harsh Australia more effectively. I would adv advocate for intense studies of monitored genetics so that we can determine what genes cause the megalania to take on its immense size and then import said genes into the Komodo dragon. I would also advocate for selectively reintroducing the Komodo dragon to certain areas that lack dingoes but have a problem with an overpopulation of buffalo or kangaroos. Dragons have been known to take down animals of this size without much difficulty in the past, and a reintroduced Megalania or an upsized Komodo, really, I suppose that's what it's going to be, it could deal with camel and horse populations. Now, this plan does come with a number of problems, specifically in reintroducing a species of animals that has been absent for thousands of years. For all we know, the Komodo could just become another invasive species, which is why it must be done carefully and selectively. Additionally, recreating a giant lizard of the exact size where a human would be a convenient snack for it might not be the best idea. However, if we introduce it in arid grassland or scrub forest far from human settlement, the risk of encountering one is reduced to where it is unlikely that you will meet a hungry individual. And that, hey, let's face it, if you see a giant lizard and think, yeah, I'm going to go pat that, then you probably deserve to be removed from the gene pool anyway. Now, some people may ask, is there any alternative to this plan, and unfortunately, I don't think that there is. It's impossible to bring back Quinkana, and, well, because it's a part of the Mikosukines, which are completely extinct. And, well, dingoes don't have a great enough size or range to provide an effective countermeasure to invasives. Saltwater crocodiles, while well, possessing sufficient size aren't adapted to a terrestrial environment, and while we could wait for a few hundred thousand years, or a couple of million years, for the feral cat population to evolve into lion-like predators, in the interim time they would cause this untold level of damage to local ecosystems. The Megalania and the Komodo dragon are unfortunately our only options, but our government doesn't seem to have realized this. That's understandable. They're politicians. I don't understand expect for them to understand giant lizards, but someone has to do it. So, that's why I, as a patriotic Australian, am establishing a political party as well as a GoFundMe, and maybe a second YouTube channel for this party. Probably not. So, next election, if you have a Resurrect Megalania candidate in your area, vote for them. And together, we can make Australia ecologically stable again. Thank you.